Good morning and welcome to the Tuesday Morning Show where I'm Andy Cohen and he's Joe Haley. Ray and Sykes both say spoken editors talk promo products and more. I never say the end more anymore. Why not? That was old. That's old school. But it is new. So welcome to the Tuesday Morning Show, where ASI's most outspoken editors talk promo products. I am indeed Andy Cohen, editor of Counselor Magazine, and he is Joe Haley. Joe, how are you today? Andy, you know, I'm terrific. We you got doing a, good? Yeah, we got a, got a little bit of a, a soccer game coming up today. We do. At 4 o'clock. Are you so. excited for the U.S.-Belgium game? I am. Yeah. I'm very excited about that. And um, your prediction is... Um, prediction is going to be um, a tight contest, two-one win for. Let's. I, I think the Yanks are going to pull this one off. All you know? right. It does uh, sound convincing. Uh, you, yeah. you know, it, come on, it's, Joe. It, Do you believe? Well, I believe. I believe. <laughs> you know, Belgium's you know beset by some industry, uh, uh, industry, some <laughs> inju- injuries, and uh, you know one of the star players is out with a broken fibula. So. Wow. So there's an opportunity I didn't know here that. for the you know. See that? I learned something. New. Okay. There you go. So. Very good. All right. Well, we'll check that out at 4 o'clock Eastern today. Isn't that right, Joe? That's correct, Andy. 4 o'clock Eastern time. So we're pretty much well, shutting it down here pretty early. I huh? have to leave at 3.30. Yeah. Um, I have a, what, what a stress shock. test. <laughs> I have a stress <laughs> test at 4 o'clock, a two-hour stress test. So Nice. And CJ Minica, editor of Wearables Magazine, is here today. What will you be doing at 3.30 this afternoon. I'll be hard at work at the upcoming issue of oh, Wearables. Oh, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> you can say what you'll be doing. You'll be doing something like Joe's stress test. Something related to that, <laughs> yes. For two hours. Very nice. CJ and I just came back from the Counselor Best Places to Work road tour, where we were on the road all last week visiting 12 companies so uh, was on you, the Andy? Best Places to Work list. One, Melinda Ligo is just coming She's into just the room a little bit late. <laughs> she was uh, also Here with us on the road tour so so cj what was your uh, favorite moment of the week on the road i mean this didn't have to do with visiting the companies but just the sites <laughs> yeah, in colorado were just in utah were amazing just the geography going from the you mountains know, but then what happened when the sun went down <laughs> well it would be it's funny that you mentioned the sites in utah because i think he slept through utah yeah he didn't I'll, see any of those i'll wait for a couple of the hours when you can still still daylight you can see the setting once there wasn't anything to see it might as well get catch up on the sleep that I was missing out cj just happened to fall asleep at the most harried uh treacherous ride portion of the trip i would say um and yes. was driving mm-hmm. and it was pitch black and all of a sudden we started going up these very curvy mountain passes and andy would yell out things like who put that there when a train was coming by <laughs> it was um it was shall we say harrowing my my suggestion is do not make the ride between denver and salt lake city a, at any time at night no i think it's a beautiful ride during the day yes um, Nighttime. Very good during the day. All right. Well, we are getting ready to take your calls today at 215-953-4979. And the topic is tips and solutions for slow summer sales. Everybody has the issue of the summer slowdown. So we're going to talk about how to overcome that a little bit today. If you have any questions or comments on that topic, topic, excuse me, give us a ring at 215-953-4979. Joe what will we give them if we take their call on the air? Of course, we give them the radio prize pack, which includes the finger puppets, which includes the ham fans, uh, logoed uh, ASI radio drinkware, and we also have a $25 Visa gift card to put in there. Lots of good stuff. Right. All right. Great what, stuff. What else is on tap for today's show? Well, Andy, we have key business metrics you should stop worrying about. We also have common negotiation mistakes, nine credibility killing meeting behaviors. Okay, you got that nine credibility killing meeting behavior. Not well, easy to say. Not easy to say. We have mid-year tax checkup. These are tips for full, small business owners. Uh, things you need to know about what your competi- competitors are doing. Right? I always say competition when it's uh, it's written competitors, and I always say competition. Just a competitive guy. Don't get that ahead is. of yourself. Uh, we also have things successful people never say. We have our favorite things. But let's start this whole show off in with the industry news in sixty seconds. Go Andy. USA. All right, go USA. We begin with distributor acquisition news. Top forty distributor. Halo Branded Solutions has acquired Phoenix-based distributor Commotion Promotions. Commotion's four sales offices will now sell under the Halo name, and the company's administrative functions will transition to Halo Sterling, Illinois headquarters. On to legislative news now. The Supreme Court ruled yesterday that closely held and family-owned companies can't be legally mandated to provide health insurance coverage for contraception. On the grounds of freedom of religious expression, the 5-4 ruling shoots down one aspect of the Affordable Care Act. Check out Promogram today for details. 
General Economic News now in the first six months of 2014, mergers and acquisitions activity reached its highest level in seven years. Through the first six months of 2014, volume soared to $1.75 trillion, the strongest showing since 2007 when it was $2.28 trillion and up 75% from a year ago. Industry personnel moves now. Top 40 distributor The Vernon Company announced last week that it promoted Chris Vernon to president and co-CEO. Bill Vernon will continue as chairman and co-CEO of the company. Also, Top 40 distributor Proforma announced that it hired Tom Rizzi to serve as senior vice president of business development. Rizzi had been the chief sales officer at Top 40 firm Workflow One. And finally, make sure to check out the latest episode of The Joe Show and Promogram today. Joe, what is hot for today? Screenies. I'm sorry, screenies? Screenies. There's no need to apologize it's for different Andy. than greenies? Screenies, that's right. Oh. And I also have something green on the show, too. Wow. That's something everybody needs to check in on. <laughs> <laughs> See what's green and what a screenie is. Andy, you're wearing green. I would think you would wear red, white, and blue, but... I don't see you be. wearing red, white, and blue. Red, white, a, blue. N- and neither blue. of those... None of those <laughs> red, red, whites, or blues are the Joe. actual yes. colors of the Am American I flag. patriotic? More patriotic looking than Andy today, yes. Well, I wasn't shooting for a yes. patriotic look, though. You are. <laughs> I'm wearing red, white, and blue. You were shooting for a patriotic look and sort of failed. I was not shooting for the patriotic look, and I succeeded. Okay. Ah, here we go. <laughs> there you go. Go USA. Way to show your team spirit, Andy Cohen. We showed team spirit earlier on in yeah, the we show. We talked early. about it. All right. At the beginning. And some of us dressed in our team spirit. <laughs> Ooh, blue nails, too. Blue nails. And red toenails. Joe's not wearing red, white, and blue, but he's very... You haven't, seen, you haven't seen my boxer shorts. All right, on line three, we have our friend Stanley. Stanley, are you going to be watching the World Cup today? Oh, absolutely. How could you not? I know. I bet your little doggy will watch it, too. What's that? Does he have a doggy? I'm thinking of Lee and Lee. <laughs> Never mind. Stanley, what's your question? He's, Melinda's my getting our regular callers in, confused. In the, uh, in the, as we gear into summer, um, how early is it too early or is it just the right time to start talking to clients about Christmas, the holidays, gearing up, and will that stimulate more sales even indirectly into summer sales? No, it's never too early. Stanley, start now. Start now. Get them thinking about the holidays. A lot of times I'm sure you have some clients that wait to the last minute to order their products for the uh, holidays for their clients and their employees. So get them thinking about early. And if you get them thinking about early, what just might happen is they might say, hey, well, we want to do something for a Halloween promotion. We want to do something for a Thanksgiving promotion. So, no, it's never too early. There you have it. Get cracking, Stanley. But, but you know what? Summer is also a good time to start with uh, talking with uh, your education uh, partner, especially schools, because a lot of them set their budget in July. So when you start with them in the beginning of the school year, you might be too late. And what else is a good time for? Football? Football? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Anything come, any, any fall sports fall. coming up, mm-hmm. you know, leagues are starting to form, teams are starting to get ready to start practicing stuff, booster clubs, you know, that's a whole set of, you know, new parents at high schools with the booster clubs. You know, your kid plays for a few years, usually, you know, there's a turnover yearly, someone who runs that. So there's always an opportunity to make a new sales call on them, and there's other opportunities outside the booster club because a lot of those parents own their own businesses or, you know, work at big companies that might need your help, Stanley. Absolutely. Well, go to it. No, I'm trying. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Stanley, thanks for calling. Stay on the line for your ASI prize pack on line two. We have Stacy. Good morning, Stacy. Good morning. What's your question? Stacy's mom's got it going on. Did you know that? (laughs) (laughs) I never heard that before. Thanks. I love that commercial. It was, it, a was a it was a song before it was a commercial. Was a I don't know. I've never heard of this a song. I just heard of this commercial. Oh the Fountains of Wayne. Is but we digress. That. All right. Anyway. Stacy, sorry about that. Oh, no, that's fine. <laughs> um, I just had a question because uh, I'm coming up on my slow season now. It's slow. I'm, I'm going to take a vacation. Much deserved. <laughs> um, and I know business won't pick up till later this year, and everyone goes crazy and need everything. They need everything rushed. Um, so um, do you guys have any advice on how I can be a little more active and productive while it's slow and quiet? Well, I think you're making a mistake by saying it's slow right now. It's I Uh-oh. think it's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy. Joe? Oh, I agree. You know, it doesn't have to be slow. Uh, I would take the advice we just gave Stanley. Start uh, your clients thinking early about their end-of-year promotions. If they do them, and especially those clients that might wait to the last minute or might bypass you to go to the mall or things remembered or something like that to get something for their clients, you want to you know let them know that you can offer them great gifts that it can also be logoed, and it's going to keep them top of mind of their clients. Uh, but also and- take that vacation. 
vacation too. Too many people don't take their vacations, and I think that you, you need an opportunity to uh, to recharge. I agree with that. I would also say just from a business standpoint, if if you do have slow periods with your traditional set of clients, um, then I would try to use those slow periods to target some new markets that you're Perfect. not working with currently. Um, so if you're working with schools and they're not yet doing their buying, um, well, then maybe there's, uh, you know, there's um, uh, the healthcare sector, which is booming as far as promotional products is concerned. Um, if you're not calling on that, then that's, a, that's one to try to target, uh, you know, and send some, some self promos out, uh, make some calls and, and visit some, comp some companies in the healthcare sector. That could be one that, that you could target. Manufacturing is also doing well right now. Uh, you know, those co couple sectors that are growing, uh, um, you want to try to build your business through uh, through the, that kind of diversity and, and, you know, not just depend on uh, the traditional clients that you've had. You know, I would also you know, look at the schedule for your local convention centers mm -hmm. and see what conventions are in town. That might be a great opportunity to make contact with people in a specific industry. It's a great idea. To find a niche. Just last week in Philadelphia, there was a win women's business owners convention. And, you know, which just would have been a great opportunity to go down there take education class, you know, talk to people, networking opportunities to make those contacts. One thing I would add is that, um, you know, sometimes no matter how early you talk with people about, you know, doing things ahead of time, they just, they just don't think about it. They're always going to yep. do something last minute. So if you have time now, you could use that time to sort of set up your, your rush procedures, you know, find, find new suppliers who excel with rush orders, get all those stuff set up ahead of time so when the last minute orders do come in, you're, you're prepared and ready to go. Well, yeah, you know, I would say that, that a good idea you can make up sales sheets you know offer them products that would make great ideas for uh gifts mm -hmm. uh, for their clients for their employees you know get them thinking about ahead of time but yeah find the suppliers that are going to be able to fulfill if it is last minute all right well hopefully that gives you some good ideas stacy thank you home. and it's just yes yeah, <laughs> enjoy your vacation um stay online for our asi prize pack on line five we have doug good morning doug hey good morning how's everybody doing hey we're doing good, just good, fine, thanks Great. I want, I want to share with you my uh, my summer slow time uh, uh, procedure here. And I, I one thing I do, yeah, one thing I do is the thing that I really dislike doing that I find difficult, and that's uh, prospecting for new clients and just picking up the phone and um, and doing some cold calling. And uh, you know, it's something I I kind of push off. But, you know, when things are slow in the summer, sometimes people are a little more receptive, and I, I, I find that uh, that's a good time to catch up on that. That's a great and, tactic. Yeah. And, and the other thing I do is, you know, I just go through my, my client files, and I, I, I clean up information and check birthdays and anniversaries, anybody that got married, anybody that's, you know, moved addresses and stuff, and just get myself situated for the, uh, for the upcoming, you know, busier season. So. That's what I do. Get yourself in order. That sounds great. You know, um, one thing related to this that we talk about in the current issue of Advantages Magazine is summer is a great time to cement r client relationships, taking people to ball games, mm. um, barbecues, things like that. Maybe you or they don't have time to do that other times of the year. But, um, boy, that's a great way to really – you know, spend some time with clients and get some more business out of them as well. You know, and I like the idea that Doug is cold calling him and, and prospect, and Don Sanders, one of our um, education uh, – moderators mm -hmm. um, at, at the ASI shows is very big on cold calling. He thinks, mm -hmm. you know, more people should be doing it and that a mm -hmm. lot of people don't do it and there is opportunity no, out there. because they don't like to do it. Yeah, no, they, they don't like it. It's like, you know, pulling that Band-Aid off or, you know, pulling mm -hmm. your tooth or whatever it is. Something that hurts. No one wants to do it. Taking that medicine, Andy. Well, related to that, another great thing, if you don't have a referral program, that might be something good to start up this summer if you do have some time. Um, on the road trip, we talked to a lot of our people. I know Andy and State of the Industry, this is the case. But um, referrals are still the number one way that mm. people are getting new business. Mm -hmm. So, you know, why not create a formal incentive program, you know, for your clients, your friends, whomever you deal with, um, where, you know, if they refer you someone who results in business, you reward them. And um, that's certainly another way, uh, good way to get things going. And also just remember to ask all your clients for referrals, you know, whenever you have a good conversation with them. Hey, do you know anyone else um, who can use these services? Still the number one way to get new business. So, um add that to your little summer procedure. Summer bag of tricks. Summer procedure. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thanks very much for calling Doug. Stay on the line for your ASI prize pack. We're going to pause for a moment from a message from today's sponsor, Haynes. And when uh, we return, Andy's going to tell us what we can stop worrying about. 
Haynes Branded Printware has a new website designed specifically for screen printers and promotional product distributors. HanesInc.com features detailed product information and resources to help you make the most of Haynes t-shirts and fleece. For the first time, you can download high-res front and back hollows of every product in every color in the format and resolution you need. Apparel pages are organized by color and product line, so you can easily find exactly what you're looking for. In addition to high-res hollows, you will also find helpful sales tips on every product page. Each product is assigned a helpful return on investment scenario to illustrate the untapped return potential for you and your customers in every interaction. In our resources section, a dedicated return on investment page provides additional questions and insight to help you better understand how to meet your customers' needs with better products and better guidance. Visit HanesInc.com today for high-res hollows, sales tips, and many more resources. Welcome back to Today's Tuesday Morning Show. Andy, we're always yeah, talking about that's me. My measuring name, you know, everything you do in business, measuring your sales, big data, all that stuff. But apparently, <laughs> big, data. big data, everybody's talking about big data. Um, but apparently, there are some business metrics that you just shouldn't worry your pretty little head yeah, over. Yeah, you know, most of these, uh, we will post all of these on our website at asicentral.com slash radio. But, and most of these are uh, in reference to online and digital type of uh, metrics. Um, certainly, there are a lot of numbers that you can follow today. Um, Clicks. Yeah, that's one of them. Yeah, let me go. <laughs> and then you could chime in. <laughs> so, so here are some that people get a little too focused on um, and not see the big picture out of it. And uh, the first that I'll talk about is uh, Twitter follows and Facebook likes. You get so focused on those, but do you know if they're actually translating into actual engagement and actual sales? Um, so a lot of what this article discusses is are the metrics you're following actually turning into revenue? Um, and you need to be able to answer that question. So you should be looking at your uh, your social media at, with a critical eye um, and not so focused on the little numbers in the corner of uh, of your Twitter page. Um, so make sure you're doing doing that and seeing if there is actual engagement with customers and if that's turning into sales. The second and along similar lines is online rankings like search engine rankings. Um, many companies follow their uh, their SEO. Uh, you know, almost every day, and that is important. But again, is it actually turning into sales? And this article says suggests that companies actually concentrate on building many sources of traffic to their uh, to their websites and to their businesses, not just using uh, online mediums, but also offline mediums, driving them online. So you're you're using multiple methods to get to to uh, to your touch points online, and then hopefully turning those into sales. And um, the last I'll discuss is actually not. Uh, just not just online focus, but is net profit. I think there's many businesses that don't calculate net profit closely enough so that they're considering all of the factors that go into their expenses. Um, and that can include the owner's own salary. So are you actually taking a salary if you're the owner of the business? And if you are, is it, uh, is it an actual salary where you're paying yourself or is it just sort of one time here, one time a quarter, one time, uh, an, a, you know, an annual payment? Um, you know, those sort of factors have to be counted into net profits to know your actual net profit and thus your cash flow. So uh, make sure you're, you're taking a critical look at net profit and making sure that all of your expenses are counted in there before you believe you have a higher net profit than you actually do. And we'll put the rest of these on our website at asicentral.com slash radio. All right. Thanks, Andy Cohn. CJ, um, we all like to think of ourselves as good mm -hmm. negotiators, but um, there's some common negotiation mistakes people are making. Have you ever made any of them? Of course, oh, sure never get everything I've ever wanted ever. Just ask my wife, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what do you have there? Um, so basically, when most people think about negotiations, they think there's always a winner and a loser, and that's not the case. You know, the, both parties should come out feeling like they, they got something from the from Win, the win? Yes. That's what you're trying to say? Win, win proposition, Andy. Win, that's win. what it's referred to as. So here's some, some of the, these common negotiating mistakes. Um, one is thinking that something is non-negotiable. So if you go in, you know, there's basically – they – if you want something, they don't sort of touch certain aspects because they think it's non-negotiable. Well, that's not always the case. Or if you, you know, if you're confident enough and you ask for that, you can you can still get something from that you think is off limits. And sort of. You know, I'm curious about that. I was reading an article over the weekend about um, 
that. And someone said you should go in even to like a Macy's and ask to speak to the manager and like ask for a discount on an item. And I just don't think certain things like that will work. But perhaps I'm making a common mistake. I, I mean, you could. <laughs> you it's could just, do anything you want. I think I would feel stupid. Yeah, because you want a shoe on your I think head. that. What'd you say? You can wear a shoe on your head if you want. Well, or I a wasn't. crown. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could you could press people hard enough to to, to get something, but yeah. like, you know, what kind of person are you? Like, I don't know. I would be. I would feel awkward. I mean, it's well, you case. also place a value on on that. You know, no matter what they're going to give you off, if they gave you ten percent off of an item of clothing, you're putting your own sort of value on. It's not worth that ten percent to me to to stand in there and ask for a manager and look like somebody who's Maybe nickel so. and diming I mean, you every have last to person. See your time is worth a certain amount, right? Of, so um, I guess that depends. And the effort I mean, that it goes to, and and the image that you portray when you walk into a retail store and try to just get a discount just for the hell of it. Um, you know, you're not. <laughs> it's a weird image that you'd be portraying, right? To to the store and to any customers that are seeing you. So you place a value on that. Others might place. A different value on it and say i don't care what the image is and i if i can get 10 percent, i'm getting 10 percent. sure yeah i guess you're right all right go ahead cj <laughs> okay a couple other other negotiating mistakes i think this is a big one not asking for what you want you know if you if you want something just ask for it something too often you go in and you sort of try to intimate it if you don't ask yep. for it clearly how how does the other party supposed to know and then uh one more mistake is you know talking too much um, so you know present present your side you can present it in a logical manner but if you keep talking you may talk yourself out of the deal let the other side talk it through make a counter proposal and then you guys can come to come to the middle i think i think I that's probably that the the biggest one is is that that last one it, it, there's many negotiation experts that say the the people who talk the least always get the most out of a negotiation um and it, it, listen to what the other side wants but also you know not basically putting your foot in your mouth no i agree you with know. that i in car car negotiations i'll just say well that's beyond my budget. And then I'll just sit there and stare at them and not say anything else. <laughs> this lady's been but here for three hours staring. She's just staring But I'm not afraid. Us. I'm not embarrassed or afraid to just sit there and be quiet and see what happens. And are you, though? Will, are you willing to walk away? Yes, and I have walked away. Well, then that's the and key. And I've been chased out of the parking lot with better deals as a result. Ah, chased I'm by the salesperson. I'm actually a good car negotiator. Yeah. Uh, Pauline's hmm. the queen. <laughs> well, what does she, she do? What's she her tactic? She doesn't know. No, you can do better than that. She goes, I know you can do better than that. Well, I have to ask my manager. See, I am not go good ahead. at that. Yeah, I'm like, you know, I oh, am I'll not sign. good at that. I'm like, <laughs> can we, you know why? Because I just want to get out of there as quickly as possible. I hate the car buying yeah. process more than I think anything in the world. Yeah, I'm and, and, that. and I just, I just want to be like, yep, okay. Yes, yeah, great. Your price We're 17, done. I'll give you 20. <laughs> okay. No, I have no shame with that. In fact, Mark gets embarrassed. And so I'll talk yeah. just to be quiet. So then if they look at him, he's like, she's in charge. Yeah. <laughs> I, I he'll, even, he'll even walk away because he's a bear. They always look right at me. I'm like, don't talk to me. <laughs> to talk to her. Anyway. Huh. So, that's, that's so I agree that. with the silence tactic. It's a very good one. But go ahead. Do you have uh, any others? I'll say that we also have two kinds of people you should never negotiate with. So people think emotional people counter. People who want discounts on their jeans. Yeah, and <laughs> apparently. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would not do that. Let's be clear. Well, so emotional counterparties, unreasonable counterparties would be the, the most common answer. But they say you can actually, you know, you can negotiate with these people. So the two that you shouldn't is a person who is very conciliatory at first. But then as you sort of try to try to reach an you know, agreement, they become very, very uh, difficult because mm. they basically just want control over the situation. And the other one is people who see things in absolutes because basically they're looking for someone to blame and things go wrong. So, if, you know, if you try to negotiate with them, you know, you're not, you're not coming away scot-free. You're, you're going you're, you're gonna to diminish, diminish yourself and maybe not get what you want. You have to pay for Scott. <laughs> I think, I think the, the, the problem with many people in negotiation, negotiation in business, we've talked, you know, mostly about as consumers. But in business, they often just don't know what the other one, other party values the most. Sure. It might not be price. It might be speed of service. It might just be knowing that you're there 24-7 for them. Like, you just don't know always what the number one need is from clients. And it's something that you need to find out and try to That's get, get at what their motivations are. You know, what are 
and it might, it might be something as simple as that they just want to please their boss. And then in that case, then you have to find out what the, that person wants. Um, you know, so th some of that probing uh, is really necessary even before you get into a negotiation as far as price or final deals are concerned, uh, final terms are concerned. Uh, you have to do some, some uh, fact finding before you do any of that. Well, we, so we talk a lot about, you know, why, especially at shows in education, you know, it's not just the fact that people want to buy, why do they want to buy right. it? And if you find, you find that why, then you can sort of tailor, tailor the deal and your message to that client. Yeah, and then you might not even be in a negotiation. It just might be you've presented what, what the, you've basically presented what they want. Mm -hmm. And so that's it. You know, they don't, they don't care that it's necessarily five cents more per item. Um, they're not seeing that. It, it's just they care about what you've given them uh, as far as terms are concerned. So, um, you know, do some, uh, some fact-finding before you feel like you even get into a negotiation. Okay, well, those are some yeah. good points. So we're going to put those online at asicentral.com slash radio. Joe. Melinda. Um, I'm not a big fan of going to lots of meetings. Ugh. And um, you're Ugh. probably going to tell me why right now because you have nine credibility-killing meeting, meeting behaviors. Yes. And I bet that we've all seen at least a few of these in uh, meetings that we attend. Okay, now this is just as for business meetings that you go to at your place of work, but it also could be business meetings you have with your clients where you're making presentations. Okay. So there's nine of them. I'm going to give you four. One of them is phrases that imply deception. So you don't want to start off a comment. Like, let with me a, be honest with you. Ha-ha, right there. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I'm a straight shooter. And all honest. Clearly you're not being. <laughs> honestly, to be honest, it applies at that point. Up to that point, Can you, be frank here? you haven't been honest. So you, right. know, you want to avoid. I the, agree with that. <laughs> let, me, let me be honest because right before that, yeah. I wasn't. Can we be frank? Right. <laughs> Can we be frank? You can be frank, George, Bill, I don't care. Um, uh, excessive nice corporate job. speak. You yeah. You know what that means there? At the end of the day. Leverage, impact. Win-win. Let's reach out. Um, you know, it says here, uh, it's no big deal on using them, but it sounds ridiculous when every sentence is splattered with business blab. Totally. Business and, blab. And I think that that's one of my pet peeves when we get those marketing emails or those PR emails and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And the first sentence is just full of jargon and stuff. And Best in like, class. I have no idea what they're saying to synergize this and blah, blah, blah. Riffing. You know what riffing is? What you we do? Talking off the top of your head? Yeah, you asked the question, Andy. You really don't know the answer, but it's like that old college essay where you're just going to try and BS your way through 250 words. you got to put on that piece of paper. Don't try riffing because what happens is you— Well, it wastes people's time. Yeah, well, it wastes people's time, and then you get stuck in this trap where you can't get out. Can't get out. <laughs> Remember that time we were doing the video, and I asked Andy a question, and it was you know, his answer was going on for two minutes, and I'm like thinking— Dude, get out. Yeah. <laughs> and you were Stop. thinking what? You were thinking Dude, the same get out. thing. He couldn't find his way Sometimes out. Sometimes you, yeah, when, you, when you are talking off the top of your head and, and you don't have a complete thought that's actually well thought out, then you do end up just talking. Yeah. And you can't get out. Yeah. So, so, you know, one of the things you want to do there is if you don't have an answer, your best course of action is to say, let me get back to you on that. Absolutely. I'm unsure. Let me get all the information that you need. I think uh, people don't do that enough. No. Too. They don't admit that at that very moment, I don't have the answer, but I'm going to get it for you, right. and I will get back to right. you and give a time. I'll get back to you by tomorrow with People the answer. That. Um, but just sitting there and trying to make it up or trying to make up a reason why you don't have it, uh, you don't have right. it. Right. You know, so it is okay. I'm not afraid to do that because you know I've been caught in that situation where I was riffing, <laughs> and then you know called out on it, and you know so now it's like no, nope, I'm not even going to do that. I don't know the answer. Let me get back to you. The last thing I want to say is inappropriate humor. Why it's not you know, geez, I keep up this bottle. Well, that's I talk with my hands. Um, well, it's not inappropriate to tell jokes. You just have to make sure that you're not telling off-color <laughs> jokes. You're telling <laughs> Andy's laughing. Uh, you don't want to have jokes that reference race, sex, gender. Uh, uh, politics, religion. Let's just leave that over here. Let's just start. Why the chicken cross the road? All right. Well, you have um, some more good tips. Uh, we're going to put those on asicentral.com slash radio. And we have 30 seconds to speak to our friend Joe Johnson on line one. Last minute caller. Hi, Joe. Hi. <laughs> I know uh, quick, so I'm going to get to a couple of points because uh, y'all brought them up. That was great. Uh, and one is asking questions. There's a lot of cashiers that are authorized to give discounts right there at the cash at the cash register. Wow. Uh, a lot of people don't know that uh, as for a senior citizen discount at Target, Walmart, there's a source like that that if you ask for a, a senior discount at the cash register, they give it to you. And then also on Andy's comment about the uh, all owners should put down a salary. They should never just arbitrarily, the money that they receive, look at it as profit. They should always put down as far as what they make it and consider it in line somewhere as a salary. That's right. Yeah, you're right. And, it's and not since just I was so short, I'm going to kind of 
stop at that point, but <laughs> there was a couple of other things, but y'all uh, really covered a lot of them that uh, I was thinking of at that point through the conversation there. All right. Well, um, those are some good points, too. Uh, we're glad we got you in. Thanks so much for calling, Joe, and stay on the line for your ASI prize pack. Have a great day. That was Joe Johnson. Um, we have just enough time for editors to talk about their favorite products of the weekend. Joe, you are massaging some sort of something. Oh, so <laughs> that, that's called, <laughs> that is called a soccer ball. This is actually Andy. Well, you were rubbing it. It was like I was forming a, a snowball. Um, this is actually a screening. It's a plush soccer ball, but on one side it has it has a um, a microfiber cloth there, and it's good for screen, uh, cleaning. Ah, screening. Now I get it. You're cleaning. Cleaning your, your computer screen because you shouldn't be using any type of you know abrasive uh, paper towels or anything like that. All it's right. also good for your touch pads and things. But you can capitalize on the World Cup f uh, fever. Uh, I know it's going to be over soon, but I'm sure that soccer fever is going to you know go well into the summer, and then you have the beginning of soccer seasons in the fall. So you can find these from ComputerAdvertising.com, ASI 46183. Find them online at www.screenies.com. Andy. All right, mine is a customizable nylon bicycle seat cover, which is great for for, uh, we know like you like to ride your bike. I do like to ride my bicycle. So <laughs> great for uh, charity events happening this summer. Check it out online now. It's available from EMT Plus, which is ASI 52263. CJ, bring us home. So we visited Snugs on the road tour. We, we did. We saw them make, did, make their own lip balm. They had not only did they have 30 flavors, but they told us they made custom flavors like grass. So uh, what was the? Was, that's for oh, John, they had um, for John skunk Deere. flavor. Uh, skunk, and skunk flavor too. They were so. for hundreds. One not doing well. So if you want skunk flavor, get it from Snugs USA ASI eight eight zero six zero. All right, we are out of time. Thanks today for listening. Thanks to today's show sponsor Haynes. Tune in next week, and who knows? Who knows, Joe? Who knows? What you'll find out. Only the news news. Have a great day and go USA. Let's get a little cheering, Woo! Andy. USA USA USA. USA. <laughs> Woo!